Hey guys, how's everything going? Sorry for the late start again, but uh, it's just kind of par for the course right now. Um, I think this is going to be the last time that we do this on a Thursday. I think I'm going to switch our after-hours nights whenever I'm able to get them in to a Wednesday night. And uh, I get off a little earlier on Wednesday, so I'll probably start the show, um, the live stream, right around 9 o'clock, um, like we used to do on Thursday nights. But since I close on Thursdays and I don't close on Wednesdays, um, I think we're going to go ahead and do that. I think it's going to be really good. So, Got a little mess going on here, but we're uh, I am finishing up a dirt car. Um, pretty much just to have it. Um, I think I'm going to... The first race we're going to go to is going to be the uh, Salt City... Um, challenge in Hutchinson. I'll probably race the 40 plus class as long as I'm able to uh, do so and still be able to do my announcing duties, you know. So, all I got left to do is the shocks. I kind of skipped a couple parts and then decided to go back to the shocks because I'm going to drill out a couple pistons and uh, go with what I learned this summer. Um, we started doing one six one sevens, and then in the front, and then one uh, I think one eights in the back, and we increased the shock weight oil by a whole bunch. So we're gonna do that. Uh, Jackson Anderson wants to know: So does Hobbytown carry parts for the AE buggy now, or just carrying uh, the kit for Christmas? Um, we got the kit in because uh, Dustin Hosick ordered one, and I did it. I I didn't do it as a special order. I just kind of ordered it and let him come on, come in and get it. And uh, in doing so, um, we reordered one after he sold it. So yeah, uh, but you know that's okay. Um. um I think we've carried uh, some diff parts and some arms and stuff like that. So basically, the the now that we've sold a kit locally, we'll probably carry a few more parts here and there. So uh, funny story. I bought a kicks. I bought two kickstarts this morning, and then uh, forgot them. And so when I came home tonight, I had him here. And I've never been happier. So, yeah, Jackson, I've carried the, the uh, we've carried the clutches because um, some of the guys have been putting the associated clutch on their car. Um, some of the techno guys have been doing it. Some of the Losi guys. Uh, not many, but a few uh, wanted to try a different clutch on their car. Um, the four shoe clutches, uh, I think the Prismanises wanted to use the AE one on the Mugen car, so um, we carried the, the clutches for a while. So, yeah, that's the big news today. Connor Housh said, uh, "Have you seen the new Mini B?" And uh, that was that was one of the things that I woke up to and got to got to check out right away was the new Mini B uh, Pro. Um, I'm really excited about that. I think, uh, depending on its arrival date, um, I think that's going to make our, I think that's going to make our mini racing on Tuesdays even better than it already is because it's going to come with all the good stuff that everybody's been buying. So that's great. Jackson wants to know what's so different about the Mini B Pro. Well, it's a roller, but it comes with all the uh, upgrade parts already so guys have been buying the um aluminum bell cranks and steering parts um the aluminum um uh servo horn uh the better shocks the aluminum front camber block the aluminum bulkhead um low c hubs so 
I haven't looked at exactly what it all came with. I just saw and went, oh man, they're going to have that one. And it comes with a clear body, so you can paint it yourself. So Emerson's really hyped on the mini racing, and uh, he did his car all by himself. Didn't need any of my help, so, um, you know, I'm always... I'm always really happy when uh, he gets motivated to do that stuff all by himself. So um, we probably will end up with one of those. Maybe two. I don't know. Another thing that was uh, that was um, dropped today by Horizon Hobby was the. Uh, um, F14 Tomcat. That thing's pretty rad. It looks really fast, too. So. Uh, Jackson wants to know, um, is Emerson's Nitro Buggy going to be ready for round two? Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, we probably won't race it for round two. Um, we probably won't race it all winter, to be honest with you. Um, I think I'm going to save it for uh, the spring when we go and travel outside again. It's just really difficult to uh, to do any of that. I mean, I know he kind of wants to, um, but it, it's just it's very difficult to uh, to run nitro and with me needing to do what I do with my job, it's like, it's just a, it's a very difficult thing to try to tackle, so, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see what happens, he's having fun racing mini truggy anyway, so, I'm not too, I'm not too butthurt about, I don't think he's too butthurt, I should say, uh, about not running nitro right now, I think he gets it. Uh, Murray RC wants to know if I got my Schumacher parts in. I did, as a matter of fact, and uh, my car is sitting on my pit area, ready for me to um, practice tomorrow. Hopefully, no bricks in the middle of the track, and uh, we'll be all we will we will be all set. So, um, <laughs> fingers crossed. And I've got spares now. So we got spare hubs, spare spindles, spare uh, arms, spare blocks. So hopefully no more breakages on the Schumacher. I'll be right back. I gotta grab some shock oil. I'm not uh, not prepared. So I basically have um, I basically have parts for the Schumacher now for just about everything in case I break again. If I could get through one full day of racing without breaking that car, I will be very very happy because. And most of the I mean the problem is is like. The issues I've had haven't even been the car's fault. <laughs> Mason, Mason uh, posted, uh, "You're gonna make Emerson put different tires on that mini truggy." Uh, so he did. He did race last Friday with the uh, the tread tires, and uh, yeah, I I really he's really hard on tires. I can't believe how hard my kid is on tires. So, it's nuts. All right, let's build these shocks. Um, Jackson Anderson, yes, uh, we did know about Cameron's deal. Um, everybody at the Plex was like, all right, good luck. I'm not uh, Facebook friends with him, but I am on Instagram, so I'll probably see it on Instagram. Just, uh, it's one of those things. 
When you know, you know. I don't know what they're doing up there, but... That was, um... Yeah, it's pretty exciting. I'm, uh... It's kind of funny because uh, all my friends now, all my close friends are married. So when uh, when that when that happens and you're kind of like it's a relief that you don't have to go to any more weddings. And then uh, now you've got another age group of friends that are uh, like in their twenties now or thirties that all of a sudden they're going to start having weddings and. You'll have to go to those weddings. So it's like the wedding thing never stops. The good thing is, is because I'm married, I don't have to worry about, I don't have to worry about like my, my, uh, a girlfriend going, when are we going to get married? Me, 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 me. Like, you know, <laughs> all I'm doing right now, guys, is just prepping these, uh, pieces of the shocks, getting them all put together. I built this last night. It took me about three hours. And uh, I got a bunch of cool 175 RC um, red pieces. And uh, got a bunch of red lock nuts to go around it. It's going to be awesome. Any news on cupcakes being there tomorrow? Yeah, I think I'm going to go get cupcakes for everybody. Um, so tomorrow I'm going to... Uh, I don't like the layout that the Honored guys put on, and I think we're going to have a pretty good turnout tomorrow. So um, I really, really want to have a nice a nice layout, off-road layout um, for, for Saturday's race. So I think I'm going to go in early tomorrow and... Uh, get a move some stuff around um for the off-road kind of mark everything so we could put it all back for the off-road guys i mean for the honored guys and uh um while i'm doing that i'll have uh i'll have uh i'll go to walmart and get some cupcakes i have to go get paint for my um new crawler section it's ready for paint and then um yeah then we'll we'll put that layout out so we can practice a little bit i'll have my e-buggy tomorrow just so i can remember how to drive it and uh we'll send this track off of ours um like we uh like it like it should this is the last um Last time we'll be on this version of the layout, Monday night, and all day Tuesday, we'll be making a change. Should be really good. Kind of have a, um, kind of have an idea on uh, what I'm going to do. Shouldn't take me too long. It's more about just the grunt work than anything. So, I think it's going to be a good time. What are you doing up? Over. Why were you making all that noise up there? I wasn't. Oh, I heard it. I mean, there's a lot of noise. Yeah, last week's layout was good. I, uh... Um... She's huge. I definitely think, um... Come on. I definitely think that, uh... Um... What they have on the track right now is really good for on-road. But there's no place to put any jumps. And I've been wanting a consecutive, like, double-double or big jump in general. So uh, I think we're just going to go ahead and do it tomorrow. And then I'll put it uh, I'll put it back uh, after we take everything up. I'm, I'll just stay and put it back and uh, vacuum and everything. So, hi, Hydra. Our lizard's gotten big since the last time we've done uh, an after hours. It's probably been, it's probably been about three or four weeks. Look at that. Look at this old picture. 
Yeah, she's tiny. She's huge now. She's really big. She got a big old gut on her. If I put a heavier shock oil in here, would, would it even matter with these little yeah. things? Yeah, it would. Really? Yep. I might do that. Yeah, I have a I have a track layout for carpet already in my head. I, I'm it'll be really easy to get it all put out there and everything. So should be really good. She's checking you out. Did you wake? Her, did you have to wake her up? No. No. Oh, she's already up. Come on. Go. There we go. There's a hobby town and a dirt burner place in Michigan. May get over this weekend or next. That's great. Yeah, dirt burners is uh hey, get down. You knock her down. Get off of there. She wants to see the lizard. I know she does. Um I've heard of the uh that dirt burner place. I think I saw a video of it actually recently. Did you guys see the uh the uh, on road race, not on road, gosh, the uh, off road race from this weekend, carpet off road in uh, Cleveland. Thought that was pretty neat. They uh, Sorry. they used up a lot of their uh, a lot of their track to make a good layout for that. So there's um, Peter. There's a couple dirt burners. There's the the indoor dirt burners that I know of in, in Michigan, but there's the outdoor dirt burners that's in St. Louis. There's actually a couple dirt burners. They kind of are running into the same problem that we're having where all of a sudden there's more than one hobby flex. But uh, yeah, I've, I know the indoor one. I think I've seen video of it before. Oh, shoot. I forgot something. I'm dumb. actually how am I gonna I forget what I'm doing I forget what I'm doing dang it Bobby how can you forget what you're doing when you've done it so many times she's huge Hydra's a good lizard man she doesn't uh She's a mean. She doesn't, she's not mean at all. She lets you just do whatever you want to her. She's kind of like our cat. We must breed, like, um, not breed. What am I trying to say? We must raise, like, uh, just, like, happy-go-lucky pets. Except for Roxy. She's really anxious and doesn't like being left alone and all that stuff, so. Roxy's a little princess. She's looking at me right now. She's probably jealous of the of Hydra. She's always very interested in her, and then when you put her right in front of her, the lizard will go right up to her, like right up to her. It's really funny, and uh, and freak her out. It's really funny, actually. Kind of a late start to this one. You guys that are on here, thanks for hanging out with us. Emerson should be in bed, but he's not. Did you see the new car that dropped today? The, uh, the roller. The new roller. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, it is pretty sweet. Oh, geez, what the heck? Have old golf. Good question. How does one get into racing at your location? Um, the best thing you can do is just uh, show up um, if you want to race if you want to race dirt off-road um, we do that on Friday nights right now and it's family Friday off-road it's kind of a beginner oriented night we have a racing class called Plex spec um, there's nothing spec about Plex spec it's just a basically a brand name and uh, you can run pretty much any 10 scale car you want uh, two cell lipo and uh, you don't have to worry about being bad at it because 
Nobody's any good on Friday nights in Flexpec. Except me. And then, uh, then when you kind of get oriented and and um, decide that you want to go into one of the more I call it structured classes like stock buggy, mod buggy, you know, uh, independent stock buggy, that sort of thing. Um, you know, then then you look at maybe a different car and. Uh, a different class we, we run stock buggy and stock four-wheel drive on friday nights we run um carpet off-road on saturdays carpet's a lot of fun um it's a little different crowd than friday night um everybody's super nice and all that um but on saturdays um it's it's more of just like a traditional rc car race day where uh Guys are actually worried about their lap times and and you know how well they're doing and and uh, there's definitely a lot better drivers on Saturdays and then in March we uh, we flip back over to dirt all the time on Fridays and Saturdays so it's kind of a goofy schedule if you're just getting into it but um, it works for us. Uh, we also race dirt oval racing on Sundays, uh, one Sunday a month. We race on road every Wednesday. There's a beginner class with that um, that uses a specific car, and then there's a uh, um, once a month on Sundays, sometimes twice a month. There's a series race for the on road crowd. There's just a uh, there's just a lot going on at the Hobbyplex, and uh, you know that's why we're you know that's why we're called the Hobbyplex because we do just about every kind of RC car racing except um, what don't we do? There's some niche stuff like monster truck, uh, drag racing, um, you know, just stuff we don't have room for or, or uh, the right space for, I guess. Dude, the little bottom peeper for for the spring uh -huh. is missing. Oh, you gotta buy a whole new shock set. I'm yeah, they don't they don't sell them individually. I'm just gonna go steal one off the oh, stock okay. ones. Put our put our lizard back. Hmm. Huh? Hmm. No, she she needs to go to sleep. Okay. Goodbye, woman. Hey, hey, hey careful. Hey. Yeah. Mm. Eh. All right. Put her bed. She needs to go to bed. Uh, 124 scale crawler course is coming really well. So, um, uh, about that, uh, let's see. Um, I got, I made a lot of progress on Tuesday and I have, uh, uh, everything basically ready to paint and ready to apply some traction. So I'm going to try something. Um, I'm going to try to take wet concrete, uh, very thin, thinned out wet concrete. I'm going to try to like, um, uh, wash it over uh, the plaster cloth and stuff and then I'm going to paint it and see if that has the grip because I'm afraid that if you paint it without putting any sort of aggregate then it just, it'll just be slick and nobody will run or want to run on it so um, and then what I'm gonna do so uh, I have three panels that I'm doing right now and once I finish those off to how I want them or how I think they should be uh, then with the other five panels that I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do a video on that one and, uh, kind of go over, um, what I did, um, what materials to get, um, the way that I think you could do it with making stuff lightweight and, uh, still being to hold, still being able to hold it up. So, um, there's a lot of videos on YouTube. In fact, that's kind of where I, I kind of... I went, I researched what I wanted to do by checking out everybody else's YouTube video. And um, some of those guys were using nothing but the, the spray foam stuff. And I thought that, that was such a huge waste because that stuff's like five bucks a can. And so uh, I, uh, um, yeah, I'm going to do my own video uh, when I get done. I think, I think it's going to work out the way I want, but, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. So, um,
can believe you as a friend. Just put the stuff in. What? You, yeah, it's whatever. You don't have to do anything. Jackson, I don't know. I'm, uh, I am I have an idea what I want to do. It might not be concrete. It might be something, but I need to put something on it that can um, uh, kind of create some grip. But I don't want it to be heavy, so I'm not going to use like actual concrete because when it dries, it'll just be heavy, right? So I don't know. I'm going to... I'm gonna wander around Home Depot tomorrow before I, um, before I come to work and uh, see if I can find something. Chris, I still needed to uh, uh, private message you. We were really busy today, and uh, when I got your message, and I was gonna um, get a hold of you, and I totally forgot about it. So, um, but tonight I'm working on shocks for my brand new B6.3 dirt car. Um, we're racing carpet right now, but I was able to get um, I was able to get a car, so I figured why not build it and get it ready to go. So, bedliner, dude. Uh, so Jackson said maybe bedliner and a spray can would work for grip. We've actually used bedliner before, back in two thousand eight, the last time we did um, a panel style indoor crawler course. And it was slicker than snot. I it was not my favorite thing to uh, to try to uh, crawl on, and that was with ten scale stuff. So I don't know. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna wander around some areas tomorrow, and I still think if I if I get a small bag of concrete, if I if I wet some concrete down, and I basically take it and and wash wash it over everything. And let it dry you're not trying to coat it all together and have it hard you're just trying to get some of that um some of what makes concrete concrete onto the surface so i, th I think it's going to work but if it doesn't it's fine that's the whole point so i'll figure it out Mix some silica sand with your paint and it'll make it grippy. Okay, I'm gonna write that down. Silica sand. I was thinking about doing that, like, because uh, um, there's a spray paint that you can get that I tried to use on the indoor um, crawler course last time uh, when guys were having trouble getting grip going up my my uh, bridges and stuff. They were all complaining about it being too slick, and I was hitting it with that. And uh, um, there it is. Um, yeah, I was thinking about doing that. I think that would work really well. Tomcat's on here. And I need to check something real quick. I need to check something. I lost my uh, instructions for the Yeah Racing thing here so now I need to figure out which one is what size yeah racing shock piston drill just picked up a nice TTO drift 5th gen Supra they're pretty fun he had a TTO too. GTR. GTR. The body's around here somewhere. Where's it at work? I don't know. It's yeah. all like cracked. Two O. So that means that that's one nine, one eight, one seven, one six. Okay. All right. How do you open this without like breaking it? What are you trying to do? Open it. Open what? Like crack the top. Like. Thing. You grab your, uh, it messes the, up the plastic. Where's the shock shaft pliers at? Mini B. So you go like this. And then you go like. Don't do it. It broke the plastic. That. Don't do it. It broke the plastic? Yes. It breaks, it broke itself off the other one. Oh, you broke it? Yeah. I don't know. You figure it out. Here. I 
Okay. You gotta squeeze both of them and, and twist them. I don't wanna break it either. I can't believe you broke it. Here, just do it this way. Havel Golf, so excited to get back into RC. Loved it as a kid. Just picked up an E-Revo from the La Vista location today. Well, we appreciate that. The uh, That's a fun little truck. We had one of those once. Remember when we went camping? Mm -mm. You don't? That's on there really tight. Mm -hmm. Got in the back. Wait. Can you not open? Oh, you know what? It does it from the bottom. This is like an old Losi shock. Oh. The caps don't come off. Durr. See that little hex right there? Yeah. It's a cartridge. You got to untwist it. Oh. From there. So you got to get, so you get this, and then this. There's probably a tool for this too, in the kit. I'm sure. Just like the Arma stuff. Oh shoot! Hang on. Hang on. Yeah. See. Look. Yeah. I don't want to mess it up in front of everybody here live on YouTube, but. Uh, Yep, I got it. Here, look. Hey. I know, I'm checking through the tool. It's fine. You just got to do it with your fingers then. Uh, is the store going to be open on the 24th? We are driving down there on the 23rd and we'll be coming through on the 24th going to Oklahoma. Yep. Uh, I think we close uh, Christmas Eve. We close like two hours early. I think we close at six. Um, but yeah, we'll be open. We will definitely be open. All right. One sevens. One sevens. One six, so that means it's one nine, one eight, one seven. Dude, I found an awesome jump for my dirt bike tonight. Great. Right. You know, by the park in the neighborhood across across from there. Yeah. Um, and there's that little parking lot. Yeah. By the, by the basketball hoops. Well, just don't hurt yourself. And there's like a walkway. Do you know that? I did not. There's like a path, and it's like a gap, so you can like gun it up this hill. And then there's like a gap, like a like a straight, and then it goes back up. So you can what if somebody's the gap. what if somebody's like walking by though? Just like throw them. <laughs> uh, let's see. So yeah, we will be open Christmas Eve. Uh, obviously, we close close on Christmas. Um, but that's one of the only days we're ever closed is uh, um, that's no trash. Is uh, Christmas, Thanksgiving, and Easter. I've made a huge mess here. Uh, let's see. Are you going to do the carpet tiles as whoops again? Those were awesome last week. Um, yes, Jackson, I really like those. We even used them on uh, the Tiny Tuesday. Um, they're even... Um, you can try it. They're even... Uh, with the minis, they're even dude, more like... me up. Yeah, they're even more like whoops. But uh, yeah, dude, I like using those. That was a... Uh, that was one of those things where you're... You're out there setting stuff up, and you realize that you got so many of those. Because we actually got those originally really super cheap from the carpet place across the street. And uh, they were going to be the carpet on the driver's stand. We got them to, to re-carpet the driver's stand. And then those guys actually ended up not using them on the driver's stand. And so now we just have those things lying around. And they make really good um, – well, you know, you've helped me out. They make really good um, – uh, Dude, this sucks. Um, what do you call it? Uh, like shims? When we need to shim out our jumps and everything. And then I'm like, I wonder if these would make good whoops. And then they did. So it was really fun. Which towel can I use without you freaking out? Huh? The orange one? Yeah. I don't know. It was one? down here. Don't use that one. That's my That's my uh, Ifmar World Championship towel. Cannot use that one. Ooh. I'm just saying, you can't do that. It's a keepsake. Yeah, but it's down here waiting to be used. Well, only if somebody who doesn't know that it's a keepsake uses it. Like if mom were to go, oh, hey, I need a towel. And then she just grabs my towel, not really knowing what's up. So. How 
Havo Golf, you'll be up to snag some lipos and a charger. Um, what other upgrades would you recommend for the E Revo? There's not much that you need. Um, the um, uh, RPM front A arms you'll probably want to get because the first thing that I ever broke on my Mini Revo was front A arms. And uh, then Proline makes a couple really cool uh, sets of tires. There's like a there's a street tire and then a, and then a uh, uh, I think trenchers, little trenchers for the VXL. Um, that's a pretty good upgrade. But besides that, you don't really you don't really need a lot of stuff on that truck. There's um, uh, uh I'm trying to think what that is uh there's some shocks you can get but that's really kind of for looks almost because the the revo shocks are actually pretty good and because they're inboard you don't see the broken pieces like you would on a on a uh standard traxxas car so this is a spoiler if you read the show this yeah well with cartridges you got to put the cartridge you put the carpet the cartridge halfway in, and then you just go, and then you tighten it. So on the on the associated shocks, you gotta pump it and do all that other crap and then bleed it. But on with the old low C cartridges, you put it like halfway in, and then close it and then tighten it down. So should work. Uh, tell Emerson to take the ball off the shaft and then use the five millimeter to put the bottom back on. Oh, yeah, I see that. That's all right. He was figuring it out. Uh, there was a question up here. What do you recommend for a set of 90 millimeter shocks for the SCX-10 III? Uh, 90 millimeter. Uh, let's see who's got good ones. Um, depends on how much money you want to spend. Prolines make some nice ones, but they're kind of pricey. And then, um, honestly, I... I actually kind of liked the Axial stock shocks. Um, I ended up buying a full set of those for my other truck that's not an Axial. Um, but if you want something different, um, the Element shocks are actually pretty good, and they're a pretty good buy because they're like 60 bucks for four. And then you can just twist the bottoms in to make them um, close to 90 millimeter. Um, Desert Lizards are pretty popular. I've never gotten them to work right for me, but other people have. So if you got the patience to uh, to get it right, Desert Lizards are pretty good. And uh, there's a set of Pitbull shocks that are really good, but they're kind of pricey. Those uh, Conic, I think they're called. It starts with a K, KO something something. But those are pricey too. They're really they're really up there. But yeah, so like Chris Hardison says, the Prospect shocks are good. They are good, and they're just they're just pricey. That's that's the only real drawback to them. But once it's like when you get nice stuff, once you get them, um, once you get them, they're really nice. So okay, uh, shocks, shock, shock, shocks. Are you leaving until soon or taking them to work? I'm taking them to work. I got stuff to do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, the Proline one's probably just proven to be really good. And uh, look at those Pitbull shocks, though. They're really cool looking, too, because they're gold. They're just as expensive as the Proline ones, so... Um, there's some RC four wheel drive ones out there that aren't, that aren't crazy expensive that a lot of our guys have, have purchased and, uh, seem to seem to like. So, making all this noise over here. Okay. Good night. Good night.
I have a huge mess here today. And uh kind of excited to uh to be able to race my Schumacher all day tomorrow. <laughs> and Saturday. If I can get a full weekend of that car, I'm gonna be so happy. Jackson says it's probably a good thing he didn't go to the Lone Star race. I'm I'm kind of bummed out I didn't go. I'm I'm uh my friend Andy, who I was gonna stay with, um, actually texted me yesterday, asking if I was coming around, coming down. And I'm like, no, I changed my mind. I'm gonna see. Um, I think the next one is that icebreaker race. I think it'd be fun to go to that as long as it doesn't conflict with anything that we're doing up here. Um. I'm going to see when that race is, and uh, I might just go to that. I still want to go down there and try that track out. Just didn't work out. I, I'm, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I blew so much money this year, and with everything being a little bit more expensive, especially for travel, like... Hotel prices, crazy. Gas prices, you know, they are they are what they are. Um, and then that time off of work, so you're not getting paid at the same time. I just couldn't bring myself to go. Plus, um, racing carpet on-road, or not carpet on-road, racing carpet off-road's been pretty fun this year, so... Don't really need to go anywhere. We've got such a uh, a fun thing going lately at the track every week that I kind of I would almost feel bad for for missing it, you know. Okay. Uh, Uh, so what I just did was um, we got one six one sevens. I think what I ended up with last year, towards the end of the year, um, and I felt really comfortable with it was I drilled out one of the holes to a one seven. So you have a one six and one seven, two hole piston, and then um, you increase your shock weight oil up. So uh, I believe last year we were doing forty two and uh, thirty seven. So forty two and thirty seven, or forty and thirty seven. I guess we'll find out. Uh, but the track I'm going to use this first at is a very high grip track that uses slicks. So it's basically like run on carpet. And so um, I think the heavier weight shock oil, uh, large pistons, is going to be really good for that. So uh, what I did in the back was I drilled out my 1.7s to make them one eighths. And again, we're going to use a little bit thicker shock fluid in the back as well for that. <laughs> Havel Golf says, uh, tomorrow's your birthday? I'm like, tomorrow is my birthday. I am 43 as of, uh, I think, 2 a.m. So in about in about three hours, I'll officially be 43 years old. Toe Shifter, what's the best way to remove and swap the flanged balls pivots on RC shocks? Uh, get yourself a shock tool. So... Uh, Protech, I got this guy, Protec shock tool. It has, hopefully you can see this, this little guy right here, right? And uh, let me see if I got one. Hang on one second. So here's your, uh, um, So here's your uh, 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 flange ball. Got your thing here, thing here. The one side's flange, one side's not. So you want to put, if you're going to get it out of there, you put the flange side to the outside and boop, just like that. 
Haha. -ha. And then um, if you want to put it in there, you can actually do the same thing. You got to kind of feel it, but you can just sort of use that to put it in. So shock shaft pliers. Uh, Dynamite makes a set with the, uh, the same little um, nub, uh, ProTech. Uh, Techno's got one. Um, Ultimate Racing has one, but uh, this is, I think they're like 20 bucks. So, and they fit nicely inside of your, your box. Yep, you're welcome. That's a really good tool. I'm, I love tools. Um, all sorts of weird tools and stuff, but the shock shaft pliers are kind of a must have. Um, when you get the good ones. I saw Jackson said it was 3530. I went heavier. I, I went heavier last year and I liked it. I definitely liked it. Um, I liked going heavier. So I'm going to try it. Again. Yeah, that's the only... Jackson uh, was talking about... Um, NDRC is the track that we're talking about. And uh, it's a very interesting surface because it's... Um, um, it's an indoor track, but they don't use... Uh, they don't use like clay tires like we do. They use, you know, greens or, um, kind of an outdoor, um, compound and tread. So I'm, uh, it's one of the only kind of crappy things, you know, when, uh, when an indoor track's got a completely different surface, you got to buy tires. So, what you're doing here is measuring the stroke. So, for the front, I'm um, pretty sure it's 22. I'm going to ch double check that. I think it's 23 or 22. Just going off of memory. But this is why we have instructions. Oh, it says 21 for the front. For some reason, I think I went to 22, but I'm going to put it at 21 anyways. Just to have a starting point. Go. Next one. Yeah, I think Aqua, the Aqua compound from J Concepts is a really good compound for um, indoor and outdoor. I know um, when we were down in Hutch, not Hutch, when we were in Wichita this year, um, Jackson and I were at the same race. The uh, um, what do they call that? Is Emory Park, Wichita, something, something. Um, I ended up going with Aqua Compound, and I really liked it. It was pretty hooked up. It was very hooked up. There's 20 people on now. That's great. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully we're not boring you guys to death. I'm... Uh, just finishing off my my newest uh, dirt car. Um, I got a lot of it done last night and then just needed to build the shocks and uh, then get all my electronics into it. So I figured one last Thursday after hours. So again, if you're watching this on the replay, um, we are going to... Uh, we're going to be changing after hours from Thursday to Wednesday because um, the way the schedule at our at the Hobbyplex changed, I'm, uh, I'm actually working till close every Thursday night, and that makes coming here kind of and doing this kind of tough because it means it's pretty late. And uh, Wednesday I get off at 7, so I'd like to start at 9 
you know, be done by 1030 or so. And uh, so we're going to switch it up to Wednesdays. And as long as everything goes right on the racetrack uh, with the uh, track change for next week, should be on Wednesday uh, next week instead of Thursday. Tomcat's working on the Truggy. Jason Griffith ready for next weekend. If uh, I don't want to like jinx us or anything, but the long the 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 forecast is starting to make me happy because one thing that I really fret about in the winter time is uh, just the cold. You know, I mean, we, we know what we're in for. It's called the winter series for a reason. But there was one year where like three rounds in a row were so cold that it was it was a struggle to like get motivated to go. And uh, the last couple years we've gotten really, really lucky. So as of right now, it says Friday the 10th with a high of 47, Saturday, a high of 35. So it'll be cold, but it won't be stupid cold. My biggest fear is stupid cold. I think uh, last year, I don't know if any of you guys remember, but last year our February round uh, was a, a week later or something like that because of how the uh, um, the J Concepts race, right? And so we had, I think, three straight weeks of basically zero degree temperatures. And I was really freaking out that the February Winter Series round was going to be so bad. And it just happened to warm up like two days prior. And uh, was it made me really, really happy. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, uh, I can handle 35. I can't handle zero. I hate it. <laughs> like it's like my least being cold is my least favorite thing. So, uh, 35, I can handle though. Just put a heater in my room and call it good. Um, the big track changing. It's, uh, it's changing a little bit. So, um, there's, uh, we're going to be using the oval a little bit more efficiently and um, the front jumps are staying the same. We're going to change after it. And then there's going to be something in the middle of the oval, which will, unfortunately, I'm going to get some heck from some of the oval guys, but it is what it is. So, yeah, a little bit of the changing. And then we'll, uh, we'll probably, unless I really don't like something, um, there'll be one small change for the January round. And then there'll be a bigger change for the February round and then a small change for the March round. So I kind of have it all planned out for the most part to uh, just, you know, kind of kind of keep uh, my workload down a little bit. So but just changing up a few things here and there just to keep it fresh is uh all we really got to do so but it'll be fun I'm, i think the change that we're going to make this time is going to probably make the racing just better in general although the last track was really good actually it was really good to race on so it'll be the same i think <laughs> whatever Do I have any ideas on my 2012 INS layout? So if you guys didn't hear the uh, J Concepts Inter Indoor National Series uh, was posted and um, we're the summer round, which means that everybody's going to get our best track, right? So the Hobby Flex is at its best basically um, for 10 scale from... Well, let me put it this way. I think our track is best for 10 scale, like the best conditions in April and May and September and October. 
And I think the track is also very good in the summertime, just dries out a little bit more. Um, but since it's going to be a fresh track altogether, um, right in the middle of the summer, I think the grip level is going to be insane. I think um, just based on our dirt, I you never know. I think four-wheel drive guys will probably be pulling out the slicks. I don't know about the two-wheel drive crowd. Um, but uh, it's definitely going to be better than February for 10 scale. So the Hobbyplex has this really cool... Um, how do I say this? I don't know. I even said cool. I don't know why. The Hobbyplex has this thing where uh, because we're... The track itself, the building's not quite fully insulated, so you get this weird drip effect because we have to keep the track watered. Otherwise, it, it really gets bad. And because of that, you get the, the roofy drips, right? And it happens to be in certain spots. Now, I've put stuff out there to catch a lot of the drip, and so a lot of that problem has gone away. So it's, it's made, uh, for instance, Friday nights, it's made the track pretty good for us on Fridays. Um, but there's still some spots that you, you can't really fix because the, the roof's so high up. It's 20-foot ceilings, you know? So um, in the summertime, though, we don't have any of that. None of that roof drip happens because it's not cold enough outside. And so um, the track stays very consistent for 10-scale racing in the summertime. So I am pretty happy that that finally got arranged to where it benefits our track because I always feel like I always felt like the winter stuff, you know, we'd get the attention that we'd want, but then you get attention for other reasons. You get some guy spouting off about how one corner was near a garage door and didn't have traction or something like that. And it just kind of shows our stuff in a bad light. And that's why we run the winter series um, for eight scale because the eight scales can kind of, they can kind of drive past that, you know? So it's better for that class of racing. So it's going to be really good in the summer. I'm really happy that we're finally going to be able to uh, kind of um, show off again. I, I think we had the, I think in 2016 when we held the Roar Nats, I think, I think we were able to show off a little bit. There was, there was maybe one or two things on that track layout that I would have changed if I had to do it all over again. But other than that, I think the track itself was really good. The facility was good. We had a lot of, you know, we had that gaming area. That was pretty fun. I might try to do that again. That was really fun. Um, we're going to have a few more pit spots this time around, so we'll be able to handle a few more people. Um, hopefully we get over that 300 mark. There's really no reason not to. Um, even if it's 100 degrees outside, you're not getting beat down by the sun. So it is. it does get hot out there, but not, not to the point where it's... Uh, a major issue you know we have air conditioned pits so and his question Jackson's question was about the um, was about the layout and I have actually given it some thought I think I think that I'm gonna bring see if I can find it think I think we're going to bring back a version of uh, this has been sketched on quite a bit so I don't know if this is going to show up very well you guys can see that but uh, I think we're going I think I'm going to bring back a version of this so um, this right here is a wall ride but it's made out of dirt. So I think that's going to come back. I think uh, um, this this was that uphill six-pack. We've already done that, so I probably won't do this. Um, but I do want to bring back this wall ride drop-down straight section. I thought that that was a lot of fun. And uh, I kind of had this track. I've had this track... Um, on my mind because we used it once for the ProTech race 
I think it was 2018. And three weeks later, I had to turn it into an eight scale layout for the last J Concepts eight scale race we ever held Memorial Day weekend of 2018. So we only got to race on this track for three weeks and then I had to change it. And, and that really bummed me out because this was a super fun track layout. One of the one of the best we've had ever, and I want to improve on it. And uh, since we didn't get gnats, which is okay with me, um, the INS gnats honestly are the next best thing, maybe even better because it's a cheaper entry fee, and uh, you get kind of a better control of the format and everything. So, plus you get your independent classes. So I I think. I think a version of this is going to be coming back for sure. So get your, uh, get your still frames of this right here. And, uh, yeah, I think it's, I think something like that is going to be what we're going with. So, okay. Uh, this has taken a long time to do shocks, <laughs> but we're almost done. We're almost there. Uh, Havo Golf uh, Wednesday nights are on road. Uh, uh, doors open at four. You can usually get on the track by five because um, they do. He spends all Wednesday cleaning. Um, they got a vacuum and clean all the pits and everything. So I think you can usually get in there about four. You can usually get on the track around five. He uh, takes entries up to like 6.40, and then they start racing at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. And then there's one, for sure, one Sunday a month during the wintertime. I think December actually has two rounds, so I think it's got this upcoming Sunday. And then I think they got another one. Oh, no, they just had one. Sorry. They just had one at the end of November, and then they're doing this one. So, yeah. And then the next one will be in January. So, yeah, we got... Always got something going on. It's crazy. Who's racing tomorrow night? I bet you Jackson, Lance, uh, me, uh, I'm sure TJ will be there. Um, I'm sure John will be there. Emerson will probably be there. Not racing e-buggy, though. Mini trucking. What am I doing? Okay. All right. Here we go. Where's my rag at? Steve R.C., uh, Tim runs races on Wednesday. He is the on-road race director, so you guys get Tim on Wednesday. He also does the Dirt Oval. Every once in a while, Tim's out of town. And it's uh, either Trevor or like Tom or somebody will do Wednesday nights. But it's pretty much always Tim. I am done racing on-road for a little while. Just too much stuff going on. Too many projects. I have, uh, have a lot going on. I got my 13.5 four-wheel drive buggy over there that I found my body to, and then I forgot I cut the body up to fit over a low-C car. So the the techno body and the low-C body almost fit each other. So 
I might try to get my forward red body to work. I got it up there. Uh, yeah, Jackson, uh, that's one reason why I wanted to spend a little bit more time on the layout tomorrow because um, I know there's some guys coming up um, from Topeka that I talked to. So I'm, uh, I just want to make sure that our track is good. I, if, if, uh, if it was kind of like Thanksgiving weekend, like last week, I probably would just use the layout that the honored guys put down and call it good, but, um, I don't want to. <laughs> I, I want to have like a more off-roadish feeling, uh, layout. So, uh, see that right there i love this thing love it it's my favorite tool one of my favorite tools yeah jackson we've been um we've been close to uh having a b main and mod two wheel um a couple weeks now just we just haven't uh we haven't quite gotten there yet. I don't, you know, um, for those of you guys that are watching that, you know, might be from out of town or watching this on the playback or whatever, I just want to say that the Hobbyplex in Omaha, Nebraska is um, really, really lucky that we have a mod class every single week. And um, not too many places can say that. You know, a lot of, a lot of RC car tracks have... Um, almost exclusively gotten a stock turnout only and i i don't know about you guys but i'm not a fan of racing stock buggy i i like to race mod buggy i think it's uh the hardest class to master and so because of that challenge man i just i love racing mod two-wheel drive buggy it's my favorite and it would suck to not be able to race it every week so um we're just really fortunate and I think that we have a level of progression at the Plex that seems to facilitate um, keeping that mod class steady. You know, we have beginner, Plex spec, independent, regular Joes, expert stock, and then we have mod. So you go down, you start here, and you go here. And... Uh, I think that that's something that if your local scene doesn't have, maybe, you know, try to pitch the idea of having something set up where you can, it's not necessarily making classes for everyone. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, a way to progress into some of the most difficult racing classes out there. I'm not a huge fan of, um, I'm not a huge fan of, uh, um, having three different classes of the same motor type, you know, but I am, I do like how we have stuff set up. So random question of the night, is that silver and blue truck for sale behind you? This one? So, no. <laughs> yeah. uh, that is a uh, Team Losi LXT, and that is my original body that I painted um, when I was, uh, I think, when did I get that? It would have been, it would have been uh, 90... 93 so I would have been 14 I think maybe no wait maybe I was a sophomore in high school I don't know it doesn't matter um that's actually my original body and uh I have had a few LSTs LXTs sorry uh in the past and um 
Um, they were in such trashy shape that I didn't really want to keep them. But this one, this particular truck's in really good shape. I'll show you here in a second. <coughs> so, before I got my color scheme kind of figured out, I went through a silver phase for a long time. And uh, I started out silver, silver and blue, and I actually changed it away from that because I went, I took this truck to the Nats in Fargo in 1996, so it would have been before that. So, um, so this body, this body's at least that old. So, um, 1996, Fargo, North Dakota. I had this up there. Um, I was on an A main run. It had rained overnight. And uh, they fixed up the track, and I was in one of the first heats after the resort. And I went out there, and I was on an A-main run, and my battery dumped, uh, which seems to be a trend for me, actually, now that I think about it. But I had really crappy nickel metal hydride batteries because I was poor, basically. I drove up there by myself. Um, my uh, dad used to travel for a living, so he gave me some points so I could stay at the hotel for free. And, uh, yeah, I raced the Nats with this, with this body, not this truck. And so then I, uh, um, I've had a couple, um, a couple LSTs, but I haven't had one in this good of shape or condition, um, since this, you know, when I picked this truck up, I'm like, all right, I'm done collecting LXTs because this one is in the best shape of all the ones I've gotten. Um, so... Uh, the one I had prior to this did not have this top plate. It was missing, which is kind of a common problem on a lot of these older um, plastic uh, uh, low C chassis. So like the J-Rex Pro SE, um, I've come across two or three of those, and every single one of them is missing this stupid top plate. Um, so, uh, so I raced mine in um, stock truck back in the day with a 27 turn stock motor and um, it wasn't until I moved up to double XT which is that one when I started racing modified mod truck and I made my first um, roar mod mod a main in 97 and I finished fourth I think in mod truck I was really stoked about that I don't know if you guys remember this place but um, Back when Omaha did not have a good hobby store like it does now, um, I actually ordered one of my uh, radios from Hobby Warehouse of Sacramento. They used to be one of the big mail order places in RC Car Action, and I still have that sticker on there. So, but yeah, this is my original body for this truck. And so uh, when I went to, um, when I came back and was racing locally, and I wanted to race mod. I got the double XT and this is uh, this is my original double XT body. And uh, I actually picked this back up from a friend of mine. Um, the truck itself I got from Tim. Somebody dropped it off. It's like a time capsule. Um, uh, check this out. That's a, a Novak Tempest speed controller and a Novak Mercury receiver. It had this coating over it so that it wouldn't glitch because if you used a, a graphite chassis and a regular receiver, you'd glitch all over the place. And so uh, you had pretty much had to have that Mercury, Mercury receiver. Um, this truck's in really good shape. It's a little dusty, but, uh, this is not my original truck. Um, but it is my original body. So I was, uh, pretty fortunate to get some of this stuff back from some of these guys that I had, uh, raced with back in the day that I sold this stuff to and I got it back. So What did I miss here? Sorry. Um, so yeah, no, sorry. Uh, 
In fact, I'm going for um, one vehicle of every single era in my collection. So I'm missing. So with the Losi stuff, I've got a I've got a Jerex T, an LXT, a double XT, a triple XT. Um, I'm not really interested in the 22 trucks right now. Um, uh, but the associated ones, I have a, a 10T. I've got a, um, a RC10 T2. I'm missing a T3, and I have a T4. And then uh, for the cars, I've got a RC10, um, a B3, but I don't have a B2. I'm going to keep my eye out for a B2. And then for the Losi cars, I've got a Jerex Pro, a double X, and a triple X, and a 22 rear motor buggy. And uh, I just need a JRX2. And every single one that I've come across, they've wanted way too much money for. Because I'm not willing to pay that much money for something that's just going to sit here on my shelf. I mean, I'm it's it's one of those deals where, yeah, I want it. I just don't want it that bad. So one of these days, somebody will bring one into the Plex, and I'll be able to buy it from them. But it uh, hasn't happened yet. There was a really nice one a couple years ago that I was trying I was trying to talk the guy into selling to me so bad and I was willing to pay a hundred bucks for it, which I think is a lot, but he uh he didn't want to give it up. I think it was sentimental to him. Which I can understand. I'm sentimental with a lot of my RC cars. The new owner of Bennington Pines Christmas tree farm used to race when he was younger and he's in his forties. Interesting. Ken Quatham, uh, any bashers that you recommend? 6S only. Um, yeah, dude. Um, I, if I had to, if I had to pay, if I had, if I had an eight hundred dollars right now, and I was told that I had to go to the hobby store and buy a 6S vehicle to bash with, I would get a Creighton 6S, without a doubt. That's uh, by far the toughest um, uh, six-celled basher out there. Um, I have an outcast. I used it to jump my house. I don't know if you guys ever if, go back and try to find that video. Uh, it's in what, my playlist. Um, and just think of that truck without the wheelies. So the outcasts are shorter, right? And so you get this like instant wheelie effect, which is also pretty fun. So if you want that, the outcast or the notorious is really good. But uh, I would say the Arma Creighton, just because it's a tad bit longer, a little bit bigger, handles better. And uh, you can still jump it and do all that crazy stuff with it and uh, not have to worry about it just breaking for no reason on you. So, John Haas is on here. How about that? Yeah, felonies are fun. They're just street cars. I want a basher. I want to I wanna do backflips and I want to jump like 60 feet or more in the air and and uh, hit stuff, you know, really hard and not be able to break it all the time. Okay, we're almost done. We're almost done. I love how every time that we do shocks on the show, it takes like, it takes like an hour and a half to... Uh, to do four shocks. <laughs> Tomcat, I, the E-Revo, yeah. So here's the deal with the Revo. The original one, what would happen, right, is that people would come into the store and they'd say, I want to want an E-Revo, I want to go fast, I want to put it, can you get me two three cells? And I would tell them, okay, but you need to know that just because the electronics can handle uh, two three cells does not mean that the truck can handle two three cells. And that stuff will just start falling off of the truck or breaking for pretty much no reason at all. And almost every single person would take that and go, okay, cool, give me two three cells. So they'd buy two three cells and then they'd come back a day later and go, dude, you were right. I need to get these upgrades. And they'd spend another like three or four hundred dollars on driveline parts and and uh, you know better front and rear diffs or whatever and you're just like dude like uh 
uh, you know, when the, the Arma came out, it was like, um, uh, it was like they threw the gauntlet down and Traxxas had to do something. So that's why you have the new version of the E-Revo that does have the upgraded driveline parts, a little bit stronger plastic arms, stuff like that. So um, the E-Revo is definitely better since it's been upgraded. But if I had to do a side-by-side -side comparison between the two, I would still say a Creighton Success is better in the just all-out bashing department over an E-Revo. And that's just my personal opinion. Clearly, I'm not going to be sponsored by Traxxas anytime soon, so. <laughs> I need a beer. Eh, I got some Blue Moon upstairs, but I'm out of oranges, so I kind of don't want to drink it without the orange. I tried it with lemon the other day, and oof, not the same. Not the same. Chris Hardison says that he's uh, he saw a guy on YouTube took his infraction. So I mean, the infraction and the felony both are kind of uh, they're kind of marketed as kind of an all terrain vehicle. I mean, they've got a little bit of clearance. Um, and yeah, you can do what that guy did put uh, like longer shocks on it just to get a little bit more droop and uh and take it somewhere you just can't treat it the same you know as you could with say a uh as a uh as a Creighton something now that being said uh i don't know about you chris i'm not a huge fan of fixing an outcast 8s uh <laughs> we've had We've had one or one or two Outcast and Creighton 8s's in the store to work on, and those things are a gigantic pain in the butt to fix uh, when it comes to customer repairs. Like that's another reason why I like the Creighton over the Revo. It's just like the Creighton would be a little bit easier to work on because it's basically just a big eight scale truggy, right? So you got the front clip and the rear clip to take off and on, and your center diff. You can get all those isolated and just fix the part that needs to be fixed. Or Revo, you know fix stuff you got to like take off pretty much virtually the entire front end or the entire rear end it's all kind of it's it's a it's a truck that was designed pre slash four by four right so the max right the max is a good truck too I, I always forget about that one um i still see those break more than a creighton but at least a max is easier to work on it's got a it's got a front section and a rear section you can get those pieces apart Whereas the Revo, it's not really like that. So if you do break something on, on either truck, you know, the Creighton still is better than my, uh, better in my opinion for that as well. But not the 8S versions. 8S versions are a nightmare to work on. Blue Moon is called Belgian, Belgium Moon. In Canada, yeah, it's Belgian white down here is uh, what they call it. Blue moon, Belgian white. Jackson, yeah, the X Max, dude. The X Max, if if it's it's weird because for me it's the opposite. So if you took an a uh, Creighton 8s or an Outcast 8s. And compared it to an X-Max, X-Max all day long, in my opinion. Easier to work on, better suspension, um, more fun to drive, in my opinion. But in the in the 6S versions, it's the opposite. I'd go the Armor route. <laughs> Chris Hardison says, it's so big, I've had it 100% uh, tore down, greased up, six new RPM arms, new bottom plate. Yeah, it sucks. They're, they're a monstrosity to fix, so. You know, um, funny story, there's a, a, a guy I met at Worlds, um, Christopher Mitchell, and he's from Australia, and uh, we hung out for a little bit, off and on throughout the week, 
and uh, we were playing ping pong in, in the hotel. And uh, I straight up asked him, I go, hey, man, you're from Australia? And he's like, yeah, I can't do the accent, so whatever. Um, but uh, I'm like, so do Australian people drink Fosters? And uh, he's like, F no. <laughs> And I'm like, well, I thought I thought Foster's was Australia for beer. And he's like, absolutely not. He's like, F that. That's the most worst beer ever. Oh, that was so funny. That was so funny. So it's interesting that uh, what different beers are called, I guess, in different countries and what they drink in different countries and what's marketed as. I guess... I guess... Uh, I can't think of a Canadian beer here in the States that's, that's like marketed as a Canadian beer. Okay. Put that back on. This goes on here. Man, it's pretty smooth. Not too shabby. Stick this down here. We're almost done. And uh, now, I get to swap out my black nuts for my red nuts. Oh, Labatt's. You're right. It's got the little, uh, it's got the uh, maple leaf on it. I forgot about that. Yeah, you're right. It is marketed as a Canadian beer. Kind of looks goofy with the blue and red together. I wish they made... Uh, I wish they made... Uh, all these other pieces in red. And I'm too cheap to have somebody do it for me, so I won't be able to do that. I forgot to put the spacers inside of the shocks. That's going to make this handle differently. Maybe. We'll find out. I can always add them in later. Strongbow Cider. I haven't heard of that one. Mevin? Kevin Talbot. Yeah. I I gotta be honest with you. I uh I I watch uh, I watch Harley Designs, um, Josh the uh, Ty Tidy, Tidy, and uh, he's a crawler guy, and um, Skill Builders Guild is another one that I I tend to watch, um, but I've I've never really sat through an entire Kevin Talbot video, and I know he's a really popular RC YouTuber. Um, I do, I do watch, uh, uh, who's the other one? Um, uh, RC Driver. Because he usually gets pretty much all the releases as soon as they get announced. So if you want to, like, get up to speed on all these new vehicles, he's pretty much one of the few YouTubers that gets just about everything. Um, it's better than Red's Apple Ale. Yeah, I, Red's Apple Ale, I've, I had an apple beer phase for a little while and I'm not uh, I'm not really into it anymore. I miss my Henry's hard soda. I can't find that anywhere in Omaha anymore. Bums me out. Oh, 
Uh, is Emerson going to the Salt City? Yes. I think he's going to go with me. I think he's going to run 13.5 uh, four-wheel drive. And uh, I might get a 10.5 motor for their mini truck class. Just, I don't know. Putting a spec motor in a, in a mini truggy is kind of like sacrilege, in my opinion. Should make it go fast. Like that, I don't know. Rich Super Bash. I'll have to look that one up. Of course, um... Uh, Ryan Harris, of course. I like to watch his stuff. He, he makes really clean videos. I wish I had that uh, editing prowess when I'm doing stuff. I'm getting better at it, though, but... He's got that, uh, he's got his own nice, clean look in all of his videos, so. Okay, well, I have a, uh, at least I have a complete car now. Just needs electronics. And, uh, luckily I don't have to worry about racing it this weekend or anytime soon, so. It's together. Oh! Oh, 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 where did that go? I gotta do something real quick. I'm not done yet. I just bought these things today so that I can finish this off. I didn't have these on my old car and I want them on my new car. There's the uh, carbon fiber top to the to the uh, um, servo mount. Little dab of uh, of. Um, Thread lock. Chris, this is a uh, Team Associated B6.3. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to... It's a dirt car, right? So my carpet car is my Schumacher for now, which I finally get to race this weekend. Hopefully no problems. And uh, um, But for dirt... I just you, right now you just cannot, in my opinion, you can't you can't beat the associated. So, um, I built a new one so that I have it ready to go for this summer. But also, um, we're going. I got hired to uh, be the race director uh, for the Salt City Classic in Hutchinson, Kansas. So this will be the second event down there um, that my. Side company Talking Fish RC has uh, been hired to uh, to manage the race, and uh, they have a forty plus mod class. So last time I missed out back in uh, in October on racing it, and I'm like, I'm not going to do that again. I want to race if I can, if they're going to let me. Um, I want to race forty plus mod. So so that's what we're doing. Peter wants to know if I'm going to get the battery net for this one. Um, probably not. Uh, nothing against the battery, the battery net, but I think that having the solid battery tray um, or solid battery holder in here uh, will stiffen it up a little bit. Um, whereas the the net might let it flex slightly, so I am uh, I'm probably not going to do that. It would look cool with a red battery tray in here, but um, 
to be honest with you, I'm probably just going to stick with the stock one. <laughs> Call it good. It's just, uh, it's underneath the body and everything, so it doesn't, I'm not like showing off to anybody. I did want to get these, the red on there just for that though. Oh, and then I wanted to put this in back here. Do, do, do. Got this little brace, right, for the wing. So I tend to go through wings a lot because I crash a lot. And, uh, oh shoot, where did that go? So I'm like, all right, I'm going to get that cool brace that they made. Maybe I won't. I just dropped it. I don't know where it went. Oh, there it is. Jeez. Okay. Do 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 do. Don't do that again. So I'm gonna put this brace in here, and uh, see if I can keep my stupid wing mount from flexing back and forth all the time. that's what they made it for it'd be cool if it was red Jeez. okay now we're done now I think we're done Whew. don't need to worry about getting the body painted because uh, I already have two Painted bodies. I've got the old B6.2 body, which I actually like a lot, and then I've got the uh, the newest one. And uh, just got to get my electronics in and get to call it good. I got these for tomorrow. I uh, I splurged and got a whole bunch of stuff yesterday from the Plex, and uh, got myself some. Some Schumacher carbon fiber shock towers for my front and my rear. So, still no rear sway bar because they're not in stock anywhere. But it is what it is. So, oh well. Whew, almost done. I want to put these on. Got some red wheel nuts. These are the uh, 175RC serrated and uh, um, what do they call that? The nylon. Nylon wheel nuts. Probably won't fit on the front actually. I'm going to get my wheels and tires. Just thought about that. Need the skinny ones. But the rears will stay on there for sure. And then, check this out. So, unfortunately, uh, J Concepts does not make anything red other than a couple of Ryan Mayfield things, like the uh, camber gauge. So, I got some, uh, I always get this. I don't know how many of these I bought, but I always end up forgetting to keep them when I sell my, uh, my cars. So, I've got some... Uh, some Exotech red uh, wing buttons. And I just dropped it too. Where did it go? There it is. Uh, Peter, I can't use a different brand sway bar. I looked, um, the associated hookups, the, the way that the associated ones mount onto the car, uh, don't work with the Schumacher. So, and I looked at the low C kit and it's way different. Um, I thought maybe I could just use like the associated hardware. But it's uh, it's so different that it just uh, there'd be no real way to no real way to uh, rig it up. So, oh well, 
Um, honestly, the car handled really good without it. Um, I will say that the uh, Chance Rolfs uh, associated car that I used this weekend had a rear sway bar and no front sway bar. And it also handled really good, like really good. So um, when the when the rear sway bar, when the Cougar rear sway bar stuff does finally get here off the back order, I'm, I'll be very anxious to, uh, to use it. But until then, I'll make do with what I got. I went with, uh, so I made the, I made that build video on that Schumacher and I pretty much just ran it kit and it's really soft out of the box for kit. It's almost like it was made for dirt, right? But it has a gear diff in it. And so last week, last Friday, I, uh, two Fridays ago, I'm sorry. Um, I put, uh, 40, 42 weight in the front and 40 weight in the back. And I went with stiffer springs. I did, they did have the spring kit in stock, uh, core RC did, um, for May main. And, uh, the car was working really good. So I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll just make do with what we got at this point. I'm just trying to race for second because I don't think there's any chance of uh, catching Ethan Dallaire. He's super fast on carpet. So we'll see what happens. Um, when are fuzz bites coming in stock? I have no idea, man. So there was something on the team page that said a couple weeks. They're still off by a couple weeks, so you got to keep your uh, fingers crossed and uh, and hope hope that we get a bunch of them off back order. So it's just the way things are going right now with uh, all those ships sitting off the coast, full of stuff for just about everybody. <sighs> it's pretty. They're really pretty when they're new. So. All right, um, I think that's it. I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed. Uh, thanks for hanging in there. Remember, uh, so I think next week we're going to do, starting next week, we're going to switch this to Wednesday night so I can start a little earlier. And uh, um, as long as everything goes well with the track, if something breaks down and I have to spend a Wednesday night fixing something, you know, you never know that could happen, but I don't think it's going to. So we'll, uh, we'll shoot for uh, about 9 o'clock on Wednesday. Uh, next week should be fun we'll find something to work on so i will see you guys later uh again thanks for tuning in and hanging out with me and uh i hope you've been entertained <laughs> you guys have a good one and uh we'll uh we'll get video of all the racing this weekend uh carpet racing for the mains and then uh, we'll see you on the podcast no we won't there's no podcast what am i saying I forgot it's the first monday of the week I'm trying to sign off, and I keep thinking of stuff to say. Anyways, I'll see you guys later.